Jerry A. F. Fodor, The Modularity of Mind. Embark on a journey to demystify the complexities of the human mind with The Modularity of Mind by Jerry A. Half Fodor. The book delves deep into faculty psychology, a field that explores how different psychological mechanisms interact and contribute to the human mind's function. Unravel the differences between the modularity thesis and the general notion of psychological faculties. Navigating between neo-Cartesian and empiricist explanations, we will investigate the concept of mental structures and the intriguing ideas of horizontal and vertical faculties. Gain insights into cognitive systems, their modularity, and the very limits of human knowledge. Understanding Faculty Psychology Faculty psychology emphasizes that different mental faculties work together to form the mind. Perception, learning, and language all interact via various psychological mechanisms. Unlike associationist theories like behaviorism, this approach suggests that mental abilities are innate. The book explores the modularity thesis, its impact on cognitive systems, and which processes are modular. It also contemplates the limits of human knowledge. Understanding Mental Structure This summarized book section talks about the different explanations presented by cognitive science regarding human mental structure. There are two main ones, the Neo-Cartesian and the Empiricist. Neo-Cartesians believe that the structure of the mind is similar to that of knowledge, while empiricists disagree and argue against the notion of innate mentality. Chomsky's writing is based on the Neo-Cartesian tradition, which suggests that people possess innate information and utilize it to develop linguistic abilities. Mental structures are compared to physical structures, such as the heart or visual system. However, unlike physical structures, linguistic development requires cognition, which may be innate. Besides, deductive structure is part of mental structure since human beings innately understand certain things about language and employ some form of deduction to arrive at behavior. Other mental structures, such as memory, may not include deductive structures. Lastly, mental structures also have a functional architecture, where faculties are distinguished by their propositional content and functions or effects. Exploring the Mind's Mechanisms This book chapter compares the notions of horizontal and vertical faculties with regards to how the mind works. Horizontal faculties are those that operate across different content domains, such as memory and judgment. On the other hand, vertical faculties are domain-specific mechanisms that function independently from other faculties. While the idea of horizontal faculties has been around since the philosophical tradition's origins, Franz Joseph Gall's work introduced the concept of vertical faculties later on. Gall claimed that people use different mechanisms for different tasks, such as musical or mathematical abilities. While his argument that all horizontal faculties are fictitious may not hold weight, there is some evidence to support vertical faculties' existence. These specific faculties have distinct neural structures, genetic determination, domain specificity, and computational autonomy. While some aspects of Gall's theories have faced criticism, his contributions continue to be relevant in understanding the complexity of the mind. The Nature of Cognitive Systems The cognitive system operates either vertically or horizontally, innate or learned, hardwired or not, autonomous or assembled from building blocks, according to five questions crucial in determining its nature. Cognitive modularity exists in input systems that bring information to the mind's central processing unit, but the central processing system does not have access to all of the information from these systems. Input systems may be unencapsulated or encapsulated and generally independent, but some exceptions exist. Precisely because input systems can ignore many facts, they can function quickly. Modular systems break down in characteristic ways, while more global cognitive processes are less understood. The modular and non-modular systems of human cognition. Human beings have modular and non-modular cognitive systems. Input processes are examples of modular systems, while central processes, where perception and utility interact, are non-modular and unencapsulated. These central systems are responsible for beliefs and language, 
so they cannot be domain-specific. Although there may be no limit to the kinds of truth people can investigate, there may be a limit to how much truth humans can know. While modular systems are easy to study in isolation, non-modular central processes are challenging to study scientifically. Thus, cognitive science focuses on studying modular processes, even though little progress has been made in studying non-modular processes so far. As we reach the end of our journey through the modularity of mind, we come across a comprehensive understanding of faculty psychology and its implications on cognitive systems. We've explored the differences between neo-Cartesian and empiricist explanations, the concept of mental structures, and the unique ideas of horizontal and vertical faculties. The book highlights the intricate workings of modular and non-modular systems, emphasizing that while modular systems like input processes are relatively easy to study, non-modular central processes remain a challenge. In conclusion, Fodor provides a compelling perspective on the limits of human knowledge and the hurdles faced in understanding the mind, leaving us with a deeper appreciation for the complexity and wonders of cognitive science.